Hello. Today we're going to be talking about electronic money. How does it get created? How does it get distributed? How does it get used and, and redeemed? It all starts with a, a player who becomes the issuer of electronic money. Electronic money is issued by someone the same way as uh, greenbacks or US dollars are issued by the US government, the Federal Reserve Bank. Electronic money is issued by someone in this case, it's not generally a government entity. It could be a private issuer. Uh, think of it as PayPal. This issuer creates money simply by convincing someone else to buy electronic money. Imagine that this is the person who decides to buy it. Let's call him the distributor. It's someone who thinks they can sell electronic money, but of course before they can sell, sell it, they need to buy it from the issuer. So he's going to go to the issuer and say, can you transfer me this amount of electronic money? Let's think of it as being a thousand dollars. Please give me, issuer, a thousand dollars in electronic money. In return, I'll give you a thousand dollars in cash. Seems like a fair deal. Now, the electronic money has been issued because it's out there. It's something the distributor now can pass along to other people. It's money owed by the issuer. If we look at it from uh, in accounting terms, but here there's a balance sheet of the issuer. This is the assets, the things that the issuer owns, and the liabilities, the things the issuer uh, owes other people. At the beginning, there's nothing. The issuer is an empty, empty shell. But once it issues electronic money, it has 1,000 uh, uh, dollars in electronic value that it owes other people and in return it's collected one thousand dollars in cash. This electronic value has a value precisely because it's backed by this a thousand dollars. The distributor gave him the money uh, with which the electronic money is backed. Um, so that's that's how it works. Uh, in, in this case the, for the distributor has its own balance sheet uh, let's imagine the, the distributor needs to start with some cash because otherwise it cannot buy this electronic money. So let's imagine it starts with a capital, total capital of 3,000 which is in the form of cash 3,000. It's just money that it has. So with this operation here the its cash holdings will be reduced to 2,000 and in return it's gained another asset which is electronic money value 1,000. So it now has 3,000 in uh, assets just like it did before. Unlike in the previous case up here with the issuer, uh, with the distributor it's only a swap of two different kinds of assets that it has. So why did this the distributor want to buy 1,000 units of electronic uh, value for 1,000 units of physical cash? Well, because there's someone else uh, who wants that kind of uh, electronic money, who find it more convenient than physical cash, and they're ready to buy it from them. Let's call them the retailers. These are the shops uh, in, 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 in street corners who want to be able to sell electronic money uh, to their customers li just like they sell rice and, uh, and, and, and eggs. But before you can sell anything you need to buy it. You have to have an inventory of, of those eggs uh, and, and electronic money is no different. So the, the retailer goes to the, to the distributor and says, please can you sell me some electronic money, let's uh, uh, say 100, in return I'll give you cash for 100. How does this play out in these balance sheets here? Well, now the distributor uh, has gained 100 in cash, so now its cash holdings are 2,100 and it has lost a little bit of electronic money that it accumulated, now it's only 900. Notice that the total balance sheet hasn't changed. We can l look at the situation now for the uh, retailer. Let's say that the retailer started with a capital of 500 and a cash balance of 500. It needs some cash to be able to buy uh, this electronic money. Now it reduces that to 400 because it's used 100 in cash to buy the electronic money and now has 100 in electronic money. Again, the total assets are unchanged. There's no new electronic money uh, that was that's been created because only when the issuer sells electronic money that uh, the money is put into play. Here it's just changing hands. Again, why did this retailer want to have this uh, electronic money sitting around instead of cash? Well, because there's customers that walk through the store and say, hey, I want some electronic money. 
this customer might, might want some electronic money uh, to pay a bill, to send money uh, uh, electronically home, uh, to buy something, some goods online, whatever. And so it's, here is just a normal shopping experience. The customer says, I'll give you 10 in cash, and in return you give me 10 in electronic value. We can reflect that in the balance sheet of the retailer here. Its cash holdings have now gone up by 10 units to 410, but it's lost a little bit of its electronic money. Again, total uh, assets have not changed. It's just changed the, uh, the composition uh, of the assets. So that's how it works. There's a, 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 a electronic money cascading down this chain, cash uh, going up this chain in equal values. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of a commission involved here in the sale, but let's not worry about this right now. How does this electronic money get passed down? Well, this is electronic money, so the, 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 this could be done by simply by giving uh, uh, instructions on a computer or more likely on a mobile phone uh, where you uh, issue an instruction, uh, you give an instruction, please send a transfer uh, a thousand of, of my electronic money from my account to the tri distributor's account. Distributor uh, grabs its uh, computer or mobile phone and says transfer a hundred from my account to this retailer, the retailer grabs their mobile phone and says, uh, please transfer 10 from my account to this customer's account. So this side is easy. It's all electronic. This side, it's harder. This is, ca this is cash, physical cash. Um, and uh, that is a bit more involved. In, in the last step here, the, the customer is very likely to walk into the cash, in, into the retailer uh, with actual cash, a $10 note. But the retailer is not likely to be wanting to to find the distributor's office somewhere uh, uh, in, in, in downtown and carry the physical cash. Instead, they're going to do it slightly differently. Here, this value is not likely to be transferred uh, 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 transferred uh, physically from the retailer to distributor. Instead, they're going to be using the banking system. So here we have a bank. It could actually be more. It could be different banks, it could be the same bank if they're inter interbank systems uh, for transferring money. But uh, for practical purposes, think of it as one bank where the retailer has an account, and we represent here the accounts by, the, uh, by a box, and the distributor also has an account in this box. So instead of, transfer of, of walking the $100 uh, to the distributor's office, what the retailer is likely to, go is to do is to go to the nearest bank branch and deposit those uh, $100 uh, in the account of the distributor. The distributor could, of course, in principle now withdraw this cash, although it's not likely to do that. It's likely to just leave it sitting in the account. Uh, how will the distributor transfer the thousand dollars to the issuer? Well, same thing. The dis distributor is not going to be interested in walking all the way uh, all the way to the office of the issuer, transferring cash and so on. Instead, what they're going to be doing is using the bank accounts, just like we've just seen. So the distributor, instead of walking this cash, is going to transfer money. Uh, now here, the distributor doesn't have any cash. It's all sitting in their bank account. So all they'll do is transfer. Uh, uh, from the distributor's bank account to the issuer's bank account. Now, in principle, the issuer could, if it wanted, withdraw it in cash. Again, it's likely not to le not not to do it and leave it there. So that's how this side works. This side, uh, the uh, the left hand side, is also likely to work to quite a degree through uh, elect uh, electronic uh, means by moving money between bank accounts. Uh, uh, so where I put here dollars, it wasn't really cash, it could be bank balance as well as, uh, as, as cash. Why, why have we done all of this? Why, why do we have so many players involved? Well, this is because uh, this, is, this is the issue of, of, of distribution. And the best way to look at it, uh, think of it, is, is really like, the, like you're building a pyramid. Uh, a distribution channel, because the problem is that there's only one issuer up here, but they, th but there may be millions of customers down here. There may be millions of these customers, 
uh, it, anytime they want to buy a little bit of electronic money, it's it's impossible for them to find the uh, find the issuer. So that's why what the issuer is going to do is to make sure that there's thousands of stores uh, available in every neighborhood and every village to serve these mil millions of customers. But again, that's a lot of retailers for the issuer to deal with, which is why they'll put in play these distributors. There might be tens of tens of these distributors uh, uh, serving. Uh, the retailers. So that's how we create this distribution chain from one to tens to thousands uh, and eventually into the millions. So this distribution and retailing structure here is what makes it possible for the issuer to penetrate uh, the whole retail infrastructure in the country, every village and every neighborhood where their electronic money is available. So that's how electronic money works. Uh, the only thing uh, now uh, I should just uh, mention to, to be clear is that in the same way as this example electronic money was coming down, it could, uh, it, the, the, the arrows could be reversed. If this uh, customer wanted to, uh, to cash out of its electronic money, it'll do the opposite operation. It will transfer electronic money to the retailer using his mobile phone. In return, the retailer will give it cash. So it's the, it's the reverse operation. The previous one was like a deposit. This one is like a withdrawal in the sense that you get cash for your electronic value. Similarly up here, if the retailer finds that lots of customers are wanting to cash out, it's taking a lot of electronic money in. At some point, it'll decide, well, I don't want to hold so much electronic money. In fact, I'm losing a lot of cash. So I need to convert some of my electronic money into cash and that they'll do by selling electronic money to the distributor and in return the distributor gives it some cash but again it's not going to happen like this it's not going to be the distributor taking cash to the retailer instead what the distributor is going to do is transfer money to the account of the retailer and now the retailer will walk to the nearest bank branch and withdraw that cash so this can can work either way, uh, uh, up and down, uh, uh, selling and buying electronic money to meet the requirements of customers. One thing that is critical for you to understand is that through, uh, throughout all this example, the amount of electronic money never changed. It stayed at 1,000. Up here, uh, down here, it's all exchanging uh, different forms of cash between distri distributor, retailers, and electronic money, uh, and the uh, and the customer. The total amount of electronic money always was 1,000. The only thing that changed is who held it. Was it in the hands of the distributor, the retailers, or the customer? And this a value of 1,000 has value because it's backed by exactly the same amount in physical cash or sitting in the bank account of the issuer. It's good money.